Monsanto uh, came after me for patent infringement. They are tempted, I guess, assumption. Uh, they approached me, two of their investigators approached me at my home approximately 7, 7.30 at night. Uh, they presented themselves as being uh, mag taking a magazine uh, survey. Uh, they wanted to know if I planted corn, soybeans, wheat, what kind of acres. And when they, when I, they found out I was growing some food grade, then they wanted to know whom the contract, whom I had the contracts with, and they wanted to know phone numbers and addresses. And I finally just said, I'm not giving that information. I didn't know for sure they were then. And so I turned around and walked back into my house. And at that point, I heard one of them say, he's guilty. And I kept right in the house, and I thought, what am I guilty of? I'm David Runyon. I'm a farmer here in the state of Indiana, and I raise corn, wheat, soybeans. I'm also raising some cover crops and planting them. I've been here, I'm 57 now, and I've been driving a tractor since I was five years old. Uh, farming's in my blood. I suppose I'll probably die here like my father did, which isn't so bad after all. It's a, it's a world and an occupation that I love. So time goes on, and there's approximately seven days there within Thanksgiving, which is the end of, end of November, that I had uh, eight, seven or eight days to present to Monsanto my business records. They want all my business records in seven days. Uh, I had no affiliation with Monsanto. I had not ever signed their contract, their seed growers contract. I was not using their products. I had not acquired uh, their GMOs through a third party, but they were coming after me. Because someone gave them my name that stated that he or she knew that I was replanting Monsanto products. And if that was true, all they had to do was bring that witness forward. I do not use their products, I've not, and I'm not going to ever use their products. I'm not sure that GMOs are the way to go. I don't believe what's being presented to me as far as the paperwork with these so-called scientific laboratory perfect plant I don't believe it exists being manufactured or manipulated by man to that extent when you crossbreed is a different story than when you start taking cell structure and altering uh, what are we headed for uh, and when I looked at that at first I was getting excellent yields with my non GMOs why change why do we want to change something that's working great? In the fall of uh, 1999, we were approached by a private investigator who claimed to be looking into allegations that we were uh, violating Monsanto's patents by saving their patented seed, which we in fact were not. Troy Roush. I'm a uh, fifth generation farmer in central Indiana. I uh, farm with my two brothers and father and now my nephew and uh, daughter helps out a little bit too. We, uh, we grow corn and soybeans, popcorn, processing tomatoes, 
and I also have a uh, certified organic division where I also grow corn and soybeans. Um, they stirred up a lot of rumors in the community, which is the job of these private investigators, kind of get people talking, scare them a little bit, and uh, went away. We didn't hear any more about it, and uh, kind of assumed it was all behind us, really. Um, and then about planning time, when we're extremely busy, uh, we get a call from an attorney down in uh, New Orleans, uh, happened to be one Mon Monsanto's henchman. And uh, he was demanding all kinds of documents and this and that. And so we more or less told him to pack it in their ass. And uh, a few days later, uh, Monsanto sued myself, uh, my two brothers, my father, uh, falsely accusing us of infringing their patents on Roundup Ready Sea. We, in fact, had not infringed their patents. Mm -hmm. From there, a uh, two-year legal battle ensued. Um, it's one of the dirtiest things I've ever experienced in my life. Not one of the most dirty thing I've ever experienced in my life. We spent, uh, over the course of the next two years, $400,000 defending ourselves against these baseless claims. Uh, in the end, the matter was settled out of court. Um, neither myself nor any of my family, nor Monsanto, uh, admitted any liability. So, Monsanto is now, I hate to say developed, because they didn't develop this trait. They actually bought it from the University of Nebraska. Uh, a trait called dicamba resistance that they've inserted into soybeans. And, um, what this trait will do is allow soybeans to resist the application of a herbicide called dicamba. The problem with this is, is dicamba is a very dangerous herbicide. Dicamba will not stay put. If you apply it and uh, it's warm out, there's not much movement in the air, it'll go from a liquid state to a gaseous state and this is called volatilization, and then it rises up above the canopy, and uh, then it'll do what's called moving off target. So it basically turns into a fog, and then drifts across the ground, and uh, then as the air gets heavier, as the evening cools, it settles down upon whatever it's moved across, and it kills it. Um, whether that's uh, somebody's garden or their ornamental plants, uh, I raise tomatoes, it would destroy a tomato crop. Um, if it settled upon my organic, my certified organic, uh, I suppose I would lose my organic certification. And the crazy thing is, is Monsanto bears no liability for any of this. It all goes back to the farmer that bought the technology and applied the herbicide. Um, that's, that's the next generation, that's the future of GMOs. In 2007, Monsanto sued me in federal court, and they were suggesting that I was encouraging and enticing the farmer to break the patent law by offering my service to him. My name is Maurice Parr, and I'm commonly known as Mo Parr. Uh, I was born and raised in a small farming community in central Indiana called Tipton, in Tipton County. And uh, when I was uh, finished high school, I went to Purdue University and I got a degree in uh, agricultural economics and eventually ended up back in Lafayette, Indiana as a uh, sales representative for Purdue University uh, Seed Improvement Association. And my job was to go call on seed companies to sell new inbred lines 
of seed corn so that they would have the newest, uh, newest varieties of seed to offer to the farmers. Then I uh, moved on and decided to get into the seed cleaning business where the farmer could clean his own seed and save it for the following year's crop. Uh, I felt that I could offer the service and save the farmer a lot of money. So uh, they accused me of encouraging and enticing the farmer. And I will admit that I thought the farmer had the right because in 1970, the American people, that is the US Congress, passed a law called the Plant Variety Protection Act. And in that law, the Congress specifically exempted the farmer from the monopoly of a patent holder and said that the farmer would be allowed to save his own seed. They didn't give, this is important, they did not give the farmer the right to save seed. The farmer already had the right to save seed. So, essentially, it was a plea bargain. Monsanto would have the world believe that I was sued in court and there was a hearing and I was convicted of infringing on their patent. Whereas in essence, it was a plea bargain that I had to agree to so I didn't have to spend a million dollars to try to defend myself. The entire bureaucracy as far as agriculture is uh, staffed at the top, at the highest levels with corporate uh, executives who when the Democrats get in a certain group of executives go in and when the Dem when the Republicans get in a different group of uh, executives go into the bureaucracy and they're embedded in the EPA the FDA the USDA the commerce the Justice Department they're everywhere, and all of those guys will write to the Supreme Court asking the Supreme Court to find in favor of Monsanto because their jobs depend on that. <laughs>